we talked about flexibility and the reasons why we might want flexibility and again uh, our theme is thinking about whether these characteristics of plants are being compensated properly by whatever contractual mechanisms we have. Now we want to talk about some things for which we already have payment mechanisms for some of these services, but we want to think about ancillary services which are, um, which are uh, the services power plants can offer to help uh, improve the performance of the transmission system. And in particular, uh, the, probably the most, um, the most frequently, the one of these we think about the most frequently is voltage and frequency regulation, which um, have to occur in the very short run, the medium time frame, and then in the longer time frame. So we have to have a whole range of these frequency regulation ancillary services available from from our um, from our mix of generation assets in the grid. Uh, we need to have spinning and non-spinning reserves. We need to have some reserves that can respond very quickly to changes in demand and changes in supply. Suppose we have a power plant trip off somewhere, we'll need to have spinning reserves that can uh, make up the deficit very quickly. Uh, and then non-spinning reserves, reserves that can be brought online reasonably quickly as um, demand and supply conditions change. So quick response supply uh, is a key ancillary service that we need to find ways of compensating. Reactive power, um, reactive power, one of those sort of um, to, a, to an economist that's sort of black magic engineering of the grid. Um, the reactive power uh, is uh, essentially the ability of generation assets to bring the, the voltage and current of the electricity supply back into phase. And reactive power is an interesting, uh, an interesting service um, especially because the cost of providing reactive power is actually an opportunity cost. Uh, what is the cost of providing reactive power? How does the generator provide reactive power? You tweak your generator, generator a little bit so that it spends some of the power that it's using pushing the phases back together and the cost of that is electricity, is power that the generator didn't act, wasn't able to generate and sell. So the cost of, of creating reactive power is actually a reduction in the amount of power that's generated. Uh, so an opportunity cost for the generator. And, uh, and yet a really important service that we need to be able to compensate the generators for providing. Another key characteristic of power plants is black start capability. Can this power plant start up if there's no electricity out there? Many plants require the grid to be active and providing uh, electricity in order to start back up. And yet we need a certain configuration of assets that are able to start up in the absence of power. Um, this is um, an interesting new frontier uh, in the case of renewable assets. Renewable assets we aren't used to thinking about as having particularly good black start capabilities, but that's all changing now with the advent of batteries uh, that are linked up with renewable supply. And so this is an area where uh, making sure that we're providing adequate compensation will make sure that we're developing the best new um, uh, portfolio of renewable assets, some of which can help us provide this ancillary service. So as we go through and think about different kinds of power plants, we're gonna we're gonna ask ourselves well, which kind of ask ourselves which kinds of power plants provide these an ancillary services. Um, and of course at the frontier, how will batteries, wind and solar fit into this picture of ancillary service generation? 
Um, in, until recently, we've often thought about um, renewables resources as being passive actors that just received the benefit of ancillary services. But the new frontier now is having renewables as part of our portfolio of assets that can provide us ancillary services if we're making sure that the providers of these services are compensated properly for them.